export promotion in India. You are by now familiar with some of the important facets of India's foreign trade and development as also some of the core issues in this sector. Some background has also been provided to you about the recent trade policy measures and strategies that may need to be evolved in the context of a greatly liberalized international trading environment. You will appreciate that while liberalized trade policy creates a more conducive trading environment, it is the export promotion measures initiated by the government of a country in close coordination with the industry and trade that can help the nation realize targeted foreign trade objectives. The impetus to foreign trade and development comes largely through a well-conceived and properly articulated export promotion policy of any country. In this lesson, you will learn various export promotion measures, the major constraints and guidelines for effective export promotion strategies in India. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to explain export promotion policies in India. Describe various organizations involved in export promotion. Describe export promotion strategies. Indian supply capabilities were far too limited to cater effectively to the needs of various export markets. Indian export capacity, if any, was limited to supplying certain primary commodities which are normally subject to numerous constraints, including low unit value realizations. The process of industrialization of the country and capacity building necessitated large-scale imports of capital goods and services, which needed to be financed through increased exports. The need to exploring export avenues and building up domestic supply capabilities for the purpose therefore received greater stress, particularly during the formulation of the successive five-year economic development plans. It was only after the wide-ranging economic reforms undertaken by the Government of India in early 1991 that there was a perceptible shift in the trade policy emphasis. The restrictive system of administrative discretionary control over imports and many export items were progressively dismantled. The high custom tariff rates on several commodities which supplemented the restrictive import regime were substantially reduced. The elimination of all procedural hurdles in the way of exports was also regarded as an important adjunct of an effective export promotion effort. In sum, there was a realization that export promotion policies cannot coexist with a protectionist regime which only stifled healthy competition, created inefficient and high cost industries and caused distortions in the exchange rate system. Export promotion has now virtually become an article of faith with the Government of India and an essential component of an integrated trade promotion strategy. It needs to be mentioned that creation of appropriate institutions and a liberalized export promotion environment alone cannot automatically guarantee greater exports. It is also important to draw up optimal program by the way of product and market promotion strategies. At the apex level, it is the Department of Commerce in the Ministry of Commerce which is responsible for all policy decisions relating to infrastructure and export promotion in India. The Department has also the principal responsibility for the formulation and monitoring of the export and import policy of India. The efforts of the various governmental organizations will export promotion are being supplemented by the different chambers of commerce and trade associations in the country who send out trade delegations abroad, organize seminars and conferences on export related issues and organize buyers sellers meet. In the recent years, the Indian mission abroad 
has been required to play a more active role in promoting the country's commercial interests apart from their traditional role of political diplomacy. The Indian foreign missions help the potential exporters in locating overseas buyers, resolving buyer-seller disputes whenever possible by sending out fairly comprehensive market report to the different export promotion councils and commodity boards. It is necessary to mention that the various state governments have also been entreated to be equal partners and facilitators along with the central government in boosting exports from the country. This is in recognition of the fact that many of the national resources in terms of men and material lie with the individual states. Their cooperation and active involvement is therefore absolutely essential if such resources are to be effectively harnessed for exports. Some of the states like Gujarat and Punjab have already set up export corporations to catalyze export activities. Many others have started to organize training programs on export development using the services of specialist organizations like the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade to create an export climate at the state level. Most of the state governments have also established Export Promotion Industrial Parks EPIP, in an attempt to create the required infrastructural facilities for export-oriented production. At the suggestion of the Ministry of Commerce, many of the state governments have set up apex-level organizations under the chairmanship of the Chief Minister or Chief Secretary to consider and sort out problems faced by the exporters or importers in the respective states. They have also created cells in the state secretariat for looking after export work. The state governments have also been appointed nodal officers for export promotion work. Eight nodal officers have been nominated in the Commerce Ministry for maintaining liaison with state governments in export promotion matters. Thus, export promotion in the country has become a total national effort in which the government, trade and industry and the individual state governments all have important role to play. Export Inspection Council, which has been involved in inculcating quality consciousness and self-discipline among the exporting community is an important parameter of the export promotion effort. Towards this objective, the Government of India has established the Exports Inspection Council under Section 3 of the Export Quality Control and Inspection Act 1963 to provide for the sound development of export trade in the country. The primary function of the Export Inspection Council EIC, as outlined is to control the activities relating to quality control and pre-shipment inspection of the commodities meant for export. In order to have a more effective control on the exporting activities, in different parts of the country, the Government of India has established five Export Inspection Agencies EIAs, one each at Calcutta, Chennai, Delhi and Mumbai under the technical and administrative control of the Export Inspection Council EIC. In addition to these five offices, the EIAs have a network of G1 sub-offices located at important industrial centers and port of shipment. These EIAs have well-equipped laboratory facilities for testing various export products. The EIAs also undertake inspection on a voluntary basis when desired by the foreign buyers. The Government of India has also recognized 21 private inspection agencies and 7 government inspection agencies to supplement the work of quality certification. Under the Act 15, agencies have reportedly been recognized for fumigation of export cargo. It is important to mention that for all commodities notified under the Act, quality standards have been prescribed by the government. Although in a large number of cases, buyer requirements have been recognized as the basis for inspection 
for products involving safety or health hazards, minimum standards have been stipulated. Commodities for which minimum standards have been prescribed are not allowed to be exported unless such standards have been attained, despite the fact that the foreign buyer may have conveyed his acceptance for the product which had failed to meet such norms. A number of measures have been taken by the Government of India to improve export performance of the country. The Export Processing Zones EPZs, set up as special enclaves separated from the domestic tariff area by fiscal barriers are attended to provide an internationally competitive duty-free environment for export production at low cost. This enables the product of EPZs to be competitive in terms of both quality and price in the international markets. The major facilities 100% EOUs or EPZs are Proposals fulfilling certain conditions are granted automatic approvals within 15 days. In other cases, approvals are granted by Board of Approvals within 45 days. No import license is required for import of capital goods, raw materials, consumables, etc. They are exempted from the payment of customs duty on capital goods, raw materials, consumables, etc. Exemption is also given from payment of excise duty on capital goods, raw materials, etc. brought from the domestic tariff area. A centrally sponsored Export Promotion Industrial Park EPIP scheme has been introduced with a view to involving the state governments in the creation of infrastructural facilities for export-oriented production. Software Technology Parks STPs are 100% export-oriented projects catering to the needs of software development 100% exports. Special economic zones have been permitted to set up with a view to encourage free trade. It is a specifically de-alienated duty-free enclave and shall be deemed to be foreign territory for the purposes of trade operations and duties and tariffs. The registered exporters having a record of export performance over a number of years are granted the status of export or trading houses or star trading houses or superstar trading houses subject to fulfillment of minimum annual average export performance in terms of FOB value or net foreign exchange earnings on physical exports prescribed in the EXIM policy. The objective of this scheme is to provide a degree of national recognition to established exporters and the larger export houses and spur them to greater efforts in the export sector. Exporters of gems and jewellery are eligible to import their inputs by obtaining replenishment license and diamond impressed license from the licensing authority. In order to increase the export of services, several facilities have been provided to the service exporters. Deemed exports cover those transactions in which the goods supplied do not leave the country and the payment for the goods is received by the supplier in India. New capital goods including computer software systems may be imported under the Export Promotion Capital Goods EPCG scheme. Duty exemption scheme enables import of inputs required for export production. An advance license is issued for duty-free imports of inputs subject to actual user condition. Export finance and credit are made available to the exporters for export production and selling to overseas customers on credit. Customs and excise duties paid on raw materials components and spares including packaging material imported or indigenous used in export products are refunded to the exporters. Export sales are not subject to sales tax. Excise duty is not payable on goods for exports if paid can be refunded. Profits on merchandise exports including software exports are fully exempt from income tax. 
foreign exchange earning from other heads as specified in the policy also get income tax relief. The Government of India aims to encourage manufacturers and exporters to attain internationally accepted standards of quality for their products. Government will extend support and assistance to trade and industry to launch a nationwide program on quality awareness and to promote the concept of total quality management. The scheme of Market Development Assistance MDA, originally known as the Market Development Fund, was established in 1963. The main objective of the scheme is to stimulate exports and diversify the pattern of export trade from the country. The scheme also provides assistance in the marketing of various commodities abroad. The Crucial Balancing Investment Scheme envisages balancing capital investments for relieving bottlenecks in infrastructure for export production and conveyance. The Government of India has identified use of Electronic Data Interchange EDI, as high priority in trade facilitation. To step up the level of the various state governments in the country's export effort, the Government has established a state cell which acts as a nodal agency for interacting with the states or union territories on matters concerning exports from their region. It has been pointed out that export promotion in the context of the increasing complexity of international trading operation is no longer confined to participation in trade fairs and exhibitions, sponsoring trade delegations abroad, holding buyer-seller meets, or reproducing popular designs in vogue in the overseas markets. No doubt that such activities are important in any trade promotion program but they may not be entirely effective in a situation where certain realities are not duly recognized. India's production capacity, for instance, remains essentially limited in terms of designs, range, finish and packaging, etc. This has hindered the speedy growth of manufactured exports. The inability of Indian manufacturers to conform to the stringent Product standards stipulated in these markets is the off-sighted reason for this deficiency. Even with regard to products wherein this country has the so-called comparative advantage, as for instance hand tools, gems and jewellery, ready-made garments, etc., India's share in individual markets has not shown any appreciable increase over the years. This technology gap can be regarded as the single most important reason for India not being able to export high quality clothing, including men's sweating, winter wear, sportswear, etc., which have a continuous and volume demand in the overseas markets and which would have enabled India to move up the value chain in the garment sector. Market development in an era of intense global competition has not only become a highly professional operation but involves large financial outlay which is often beyond the individual capacities of the majority of Indian exporters who are in the small sector. Lack of proper infrastructure has been one of the major factors inhibiting the Indian industry and trade from realizing its export ambitions. Even a well-designed and supported export promotion scheme will have minimal impact if it is not backed up by appropriate infrastructural facilities in the country. Infrastructure is a generic term encompassing many basic services deemed necessary for industrial growth and export expansion. It is felt that an effective export promotion strategy should take into account the existing shortcomings both at the micro and macro levels. A detailed analysis of the inherent strengths and weaknesses. Policies in respect of many of India's major export products and in regard to a marketing approach to the major markets is considered necessary if the country is to achieve its objective in the foreign trade sector. Market development programs also needs to be well articulated and there has to be a gradual evolution from excessive reliance on conventional strategies like participation in trade fairs and exhibitions, visits of sales delegations, buyer-seller meets, etc. to longer-term strategies including forging of strategic production and market alliances, 
brand publicity campaigns and increasing direct presence in the overseas market through establishment of warehouses, overseas branch offices and through company acquisitions abroad if need to be. The existing trade information network in India consisting of several export promotion councils, Federation of Indian Export Organizations, FIEO, Chambers of Commerce and Industry, etc., seem to somewhat unwieldy in the context of a fast-changing global trade scenario. Many of these organizations, particularly the EPCs, have been constrained in their trade information and development functions due to budgetary limitations. Many of these organizations have also been according more attention to solving specific grievances of individual exporters and overcoming procedural bottlenecks in what has hitherto a protected trade regime. An often neglected aspect of export promotion and development is the need for qualified and competent personnel in such areas. In India, the demand for qualified and export personnel far exceed the supply. There is a felt need for the premier organization like the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade IIFT which presently focuses on human resource development for manning the foreign trade sector to establish regional chapter in the various metropolitan cities of India to cater to this growing need. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. EIC stands for Export Inspection Council. Right or wrong? Right. EPZ stands for Export Promoting Zone. Right or wrong? Wrong. Third party exports are exports made by an exporter or manufacturer on behalf of a third party. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The accent or export promotion in India gained momentum once it was recognized that the foreign trade, particularly exports, is an important element in the economic progress and was in fact instrumental in the economic growth of several countries, particularly in Southeast Asia. The process of India's industrialization and capacity building has necessitated large-scale import of capital goods and services which had to be financed through exports and promotion of an export culture. A number of export promotion institutions and a fairly elaborate system of export incentives were therefore set in place to further the cause of exports. The wide-ranging economic reforms, including reforms in trade policy, undertaken by the Government of India in early 1991, can be regarded as the turning point in India's foreign trade sector. The earlier somewhat restrictive import regime was totally dismantled. Export promotion became an article of faith with the Government and has formed the cornerstone of an integrated export strategy.